try this again. 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and soon to have audio and video on RTC Channel 4. So Ed Dakota is in the studio with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. You missed the first round. Nice to have you back for the second. Thanks. All right. We're going to talk with John Alley, John, President, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. John, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Pleasure to be here. To, yeah, nice to have you with us this morning. So it kind of gets me. Yeah, everybody likes it when I leave the hospital. I, <laughs> That's good. Yeah, they've been signing a petition to see if you could have me on like every day from uh, 9 to 5. We're dragging you away from your responsibilities, though, and I feel bad about that. Oh, I think they kind of enjoy it. And, Our uh, listeners you know, certainly do appreciate it. As I've it. said it before, i got an outstanding group of people out there. Uh, they make me look really good. So. Let's, you know, I know you're going to talk about the board meeting yesterday, but let's talk about that. In, in any hospital environment, it is, what, critically important to have people on board that really care about the people that come in. Absolutely. For service. If, if they don't care what they do, it's reflected. And the patients pick up on that. And that's one of the things that I, you know, I think makes us stand out a little bit is that the, the staff truly do care. And, uh, you know, one of my things is anytime we have new staff come in, one of the, I don't, I tell them that's not you know the lady in room two ten. That's that's Mary. She got three kids, two cats, a dog. You need to know that because part of the healing process is the environment. It's just not you know we can give you all the meds there is, but it takes that environment to to help you get you know through the illness, heal you and get you out of the building. So it's vitally important that you have staff that's friendly, compassionate. And are they like that all the time? We're all humans. We, we have our bad days. But I think for the most part, staff truly care about the people that they take care of. And I see it every day, just little things that they do that, is it in their job description? No. They go out of their way to make something either special for the patient or for their family members because that's another vital point. We can treat the patient. We have to treat the family members, too, because, you know, they're in a stressful situation. They got a loved one in the hospital, not feeling well. It's not a nice place to be. You know, it's very stressful. So we have to make that environment a little less stressful. And I think the staff does an outstanding job of just easing that stress a little bit, taking some of that burden off the folks. Woodlawn has been recognized for that over the years. Yes, we've got received very high marks, uh, you know, nationally recognized for, you know, our customer service. And that's very important to me because, again, healing is, is a two process. You get the medicines, you get the technology, but the environment the people, their interaction is another part of that. Board of Trustees yesterday, John. At our trustees meeting yesterday, uh, we had Mary Kay, the executive director of the Compassionate Health Center, come in. She usually gives an annual update to the board. Uh, we do, you know, financially support them, which is a you know a great benefit to the hospital. And what we've seen over the years is by having the clinic in our community, we have seen less folks into the ER with serious illnesses. And what we found was. People without insurance or, you know, just not the, the means to pay for their health care would wait till they got really, really sick before they come see us. Now with the uh, Compassionate Health Center, they're getting that treatment for a high blood pressure, for the diabetes. So we're not seeing them in the ER when they're really, really sick. So it's a benefit for both of us. It's a win for the community and win for the hospital. We're kind of diverting, get some uh, preemptive uh, medicine for those folks so that we're not seeing them when they really get to that serious. So uh, did agree to financially support them again for 2019. We do ask they come in each year, give us an update, what's going on, and then uh, the board votes, do we want to support them or not? And I think it's going to be a long-term relationship because we both gain from our relationship. Are they busy, John? They're, they're not starting to get busy again. There's a little drop in their enrollment when uh, we had the affordable health care. A lot of folks were getting insurance, and they're designed for those folks without insurance. Now that a lot of the plans have ceased in the state of Indiana, we're seeing some of the folks that were uh, patients before drop off are starting to come back. So I think they're running right now. They have a roster of about 160, 175 people that they see on a regular basis. And that's, you know, it's very good because, again, we're getting them the meds that they need. They've worked out with a lot of the drug companies uh, where they can get drug assistance. So you might not be able to afford your medicine work through them. If you're a patient of theirs, sometimes they can get those drugs for you for either free or very, very low cost. Check into it. Check into you it. Bet. So, you know, if you're a resident of Fulton County, don't have insurance, give them a call, see what it takes to get in. Uh, just excellent service there. We work very closely with them. So if, if the patient does need lab test, they can send them over. We'll do the labs and it's all part of our compassionate care program. We work with them. There's no cost to that patient. Okay. Excellent. 
So, again, Mary did her excellent presentation, give us the stats for the year, support them for one more year. One of the other things that we're continuing to look at, we've talked about in the past, is our renovation of the patient rooms. Uh, the rooms are, you know... Big very, job. Big job. Uh, we were trying to decide, do we keep, you know, we have uh, 20 or so now. Do we want to reduce that to 15? So one of the questions was, over the past three years, you know, where were we at on number of beds? And in 2013, I'm, and I, numbers might be off, I'm going off memory, and us old guys, we just don't remember <laughs> like we used to. 2013, we had 50 times during the year where we had more than 15 patients in-house. 2017, it was only six times. So we're seeing a decline on that inpatient population, and that's due to insurance regulations, better technology. Exactly. You know, what used to be a, a five, six-day hospital stay, now you come in in the morning, you go home that afternoon. So, you know, as we're looking to the future in five, ten years down the road, will 15 beds be enough? Because what we're going to do is make the rooms a little larger. Um, they're about 90 square feet short of what a new hospital would be, and that's that's a pretty big area when you look at that. So, you know, that's one of the big decisions. Okay, do we downsize to 15 med surge beds, but make the rooms larger. It's more convenient for the family, more comfortable for the patient and family. So that's the kind of the big decision right now as we start looking where we want to go with that. And I'm, we're taking our time. This is a big, big decision for the organization. Renovate the rooms. How many do we renovate? Because we want to make the hospital useful to that next generation 10, 15 years down the road. So when they come in, everything's taken care of. That infrastructure's already in place. You don't, you don't want to have to do this again, in other words. Don't want to have to do this again. Right. Uh, you know, it's stood the time. I mean, this is original building from uh, 1979, I right. believe, when that hospital was built. So we've lasted a long time, but we've outgrown it. The technology, because people are much more sicker when they come in, there's more equipment in the rooms. And so it takes up a lot of that usable space. So when you come to visit, you know, you, there's not enough room for the families to be in there. And then we get back to that healing process, family's a part of that. So they're an integral part. We need to have them interface through that whole process in with their family members because it helps them heal quicker, gets them in and out faster. And, you know, it's it's kind of counterintuitive. We The longer you're in the hospital, the more we get paid. But our job is to get you in, get you out as quick as we possibly can because we know you heal better not in the hospital. It's less stressful. So really looking at that... Uh, Probably at earliest I can recommend or even envision any type of work late 2019, maybe even now into 2020. We want to do it right. When we're going to do it, spend the money wisely and get what we need. 2019, 40 years for this building. Yes, yes. And uh, it's, it's done well. And it's held up very nicely. The staff and, and uh, maintenance do an excellent job of maintaining that building. But right now, the room size is our biggest issue. They're just small for what we're seeing now from the patient population that we are seeing. John Alley, President and CEO, Woodlawn Hospital, bring us up to date on the trustees meeting yesterday. Yeah, the final item then, we actually got into the financial report for the month of July. Uh, we had gross revenue of just a little bit over $12 million. And then our infamous deductions from <laughs> revenue was just uh, $7.5 million. So that left us, uh, you know, a little bit of money to play with. Uh, we spent $4.6 million on operating expenses. And that, most of that's just in salaries and wages and benefits. Had non-operating revenue of 298000 So we actually had a small income for the month of $187,000. We should see that start going up as we start getting later into the year. And, and just typically, once we get past September, we get October, November, December, we start seeing the census go up more people are coming in because we're getting into that starting the early flu season right. just the change of the seasons some folks especially if they have some uh, respiratory issues it really affects them when we make that change uh, start seeing you know the pollens and stuff uh, coming from the trees kind of call the fall allergies if you have some respiratory issues sometimes we'll see you come in for that okay john alley again president and ceo of woodlawn hospital Anything else from the board? That meeting? was pretty well it. Uh, nice short board meeting. Uh, we we complex a lot in a short period okay. of time. You mentioned Affordable Care Act. Looks like it's here to stay. How is that playing out for Woodlawn Hospital? It's been a benefit to us. Um, you know, do I like 100% of it? No. But for the most part, it has benefited our community and our hospital and the patients that we see because they do have some sort of insurance. I was a little disappointed when we saw three or four of the major insurance companies pull out of the market in Indiana. Um, and again, that was 
predictable. Uh, quite a few of us uh, several years ago met with some of the insurance companies and told them, you've got to be in for the long haul because early on, the only people that's going to enroll are those who truly need the health care. And, you know, the insurance is designed to healthy people pay for those who are sick. So they, if they didn't have a lot of folks not using their product, paying premium, there was going to be a deficit for them for the first few years, but they just didn't wait out. I think they saw two and three years of uh, l- very large losses on that product line, so they pulled out of the market. So, you know, it's uh, is it going to be revamped? I think it still needs to be tweaked a little bit to help bring some of those folks back in that all of a sudden now the product they left out there, they can't afford we got to find a way to get affordable insurance so that they can afford that product so they can get the coverage that they need. So it's it's here. We like it. But still needs some tweaking. Are the insurance people still at Woodlawn, John? Yes. Uh, they still are that's very a, busy. Because that's really kind of an important little office. It is. Uh, what that do... It, if you've tried to get health insurance, it's one of the most confusing. You think income taxes are hard. Try to get health insurance. Uh, it's just a major, major endeavor. There's so many things you have to do, hoops you have to jump through, and they help navigate you through that process. You know, they do that day in and day out. And what looks very daunting to you, they say, sit down, let me help you. And they will help you through that process to get you enrolled into the various insurance products. And the other part that they're very good at is getting the product that meets your needs. They just don't say, here's what, take this. They actually spend the time, you know, what's your expectations? You know, what do you feel your needs are? Do you have some underlying medical issues that we need to be aware of today so we can tailor the right insurance plan for you? So vitally important to our community and to our hospital, helping you navigate through that whole system of the health insurance. And uh, again, extremely complicated process. Yeah, and if you're interested in that, just stop by. Those folks are very helpful. They're very helpful. We have uh, you know get a lot of positive comments. That, Boy, I'm sure glad you're here. Uh, I couldn't have done this without you. So they do serve a very useful purpose. You have a doctor uh, retiring at the end of next month, John. Unfortunately, yes. I've tried to talk him out of that, (laughs) but uh, Dr. Haste has finally decided it's time for me to enjoy myself. And, you know, he has uh, been very successful in his practice, been well-liked, and he's going to be very dearly missed by not only, you know, his patients, but I think hospital staff and the community. He's given a lot to the hospital given a ton of uh, feedback to Argus, and he's going to be dearly missed. So uh, September, I think it's 28th, 28th. If, if that is a Friday, if I remember correctly, 4 to 6, we'll have a reception in his office for him. Um, you know, it's I'm glad for him, but I'm going to miss him. It's uh, I, I told him, I said, we'll get another physician here, but we'll never replace you. Uh, very unique individual, been an honor and a pleasure to work with for my years here at the hospital. And you have a new surgeon coming in. New surgeon starting uh, September 4th. Uh, Dr. Blaza is coming to the community. Anxious to get him on board. I know Dr. Niles, anxious to get him on board to give him a little bit of relief and some backup so he's not taking all the call that he's been calling in. Very appreciative to Dr. Niles. He's gone over and above what most people would be willing to do, trying to you know serve the community by himself. Uh, so Dr. Blaze is coming on board, so anxious to get him here, give Dr. Nile a little bit of relief, and uh, you know maybe let him get some rest, actually, in some evenings instead of being on call all the time. Dr. Blaze has a good background. Extremely good background. Uh, you know, we try to do the best we can in vetting the physicians before they come on board, and all I got from the, the northeast uh, part of the state was go to missing. Uh, staff in the hospitals up there absolutely loved him. His patients loved him. And he was one of the the few physicians left that was still in a solo practice. And it's just very difficult for them. And I think he finally got to the point where he realized, I can't do this by myself because the requirements of all the medical reporting and the electronic medical records gets very expensive. Malpractice is going up. And uh, so he finally decided it's time to join a group, get employed by a hospital. And we're so happy he selected us to be part of uh, his career move. Last question, John. It's been a few years now since Woodlawn Hospital took over the Fulton County Medical Clinic. How's that going? It's it's worked very, very well. Um, Again, a nice addition to the Woodlawn family. Uh, They serve a lot of people in in, uh, Rochester and Fulton County. So it was nice to bring them on board. And that was another one of those things where, you know, the physicians were struggling because of the requirements, medical requirements for EHR and all this electronic records. It gets very costly for them. And, uh, I, again, very appreciative, Dr. Hoff, Dr. Bugno, Dr. Brubaker, to want to join our family. And uh, worked very well for us, and glad to have them on board. Has the transition to electronic uh, medical record keeping worked out? 
I think it, it uh, yeah, boy, good question. The original design of that was that you could travel anywhere in the country and your medical record follows you. That really hasn't come come to pass because of so many different types of systems, different software systems, that they just won't talk with each other. It's better than it was. Uh, is it ever going to get to that point where I, you know, I would say you would have a completely transparent medical record? You could take it with you everywhere? Probably not. But it is what it is. We're living with it. It is much better. And, uh, you know, we can get your records very quickly. So if you are in Florida, call us and say, hey, I need my medical record. Now we can transmit it electronically. Whereas before we'd have to, you know, make copies of it, put it in the mail or overnight it. But that uh, the ease that the government wanted where you could set it at a desk anywhere hit a button and, you know, the medical record pops up. We're not there yet, and uh, I don't... I will be retired, I think, before that happens. <laughs> Woodlawn's portal is very easy to get to. Very easy to get to. We have a portal both for the hospital and for the physician offices, and we do encourage you to use that. There's a lot of useful information out there. We try to update it just seasonally and remind you of flu shots and, and different things that's going on. Uh, if we get notices from CDC of different things, we try to get those and kind of blast those out to everybody in the portal. So if you haven't got your portal account set up, you can call the hospital. Fairly easy process. We give you, you know, how to log in, passwords, how to sign in. And then you can get in and look at your medical records online, um, your lab results. So if your physician has ordered some labs, we give them to the physician and we post them on the portal. So there you've got a hard copy you can go and look at any time. Or if, you know, if you've got a, a daughter like I do who's a nurse, you know, always want to know, how's your labs? I'll go look, because uh, I can never remember what they are. So it you know, really opens up a lot of information for folks, sure. uh, so it is out there for their for families, too. That's yes. right. John Alley, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, next month? Next month. Uh, again, hope uh, we're going smooth. Nice short meeting again. Starting the budget process. Okay. So, you know, that we're kicking that off, and uh, it's always kind of the anxious time of the year for the, uh, for the staff and the directors, knowing, okay, what do I think is going to happen next year? And that, you know, that's that crystal ball. We try to dust off and make predictions. We can usually get very good on what we think our expenses are going to be. It's the revenue side. It's just so difficult to predict. So you look at history. We kind of will go back and look three, four, five years in the past. Are there trends that we see during certain months? Do we, is there something coming up as uh, we try to get information from CDC? Is there going to be a new flu virus this year that is going to affect our uh, operations next year? So it's, it's that crystal ball, and that's I think that's what keeps, for me, the healthcare side interesting is there's that vast unknown on that revenue side. How do you predict what it is and how close can we get for it? So it's, it's, a, it's a nice guessing game. John Alley, as always, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your time. We appreciate the information today. My pleasure. Enjoy coming here.